Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and went through door 6 and arrived in the steam engine room. Uh, when we arrived here we found this huge, obviously, steam engine and turns out that June has a fever again. Her fever is back. Uh, we hadn't seen her fever since the ninth man's death at the very beginning of the game in like episode 3 of this series. So it's strange that it's coming back now. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this escape room. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to head up these stairs. Very weird that there are... It's a very huge room now that I'm thinking about it. It's They mentioned it earlier, but just like like several flights of stairs and just this one room is just ginormous anyways you want to ent enter through door a right here one of the doors on the furnace there's an a on it there's a circular wheel in the center of the door all right let's give that sucker a twist well it's noisy but it opens and it's totally pitch black in there we should um go in here all right let's go And this looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? We must be on the other side, yes. Which would put us directly above the conveyor belt. At any rate, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we've yet to investigate. So yeah, this is sort of like... I don't know if maze is the correct term, but it's sort of like figuring out which part leads to which, where, like what goes where. Uh, you want to run over to this winch right here. That's a hand-operated winch. It's a simple machine used to lift things up and down. You simply turn the wheel and pull up the rope. Junpei, why don't you turn the- Junpei, why don't you turn the wheel? The wheel? Alright, let's give this wheel a spin. Wh what That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. Gah! Ah, shit. Whoops. It's a wheel that seems to be a part of the winch. There are some pegs on the back that look like they go into the holes on the winch. Good job, genius! You broke it! I didn't break it! It broke all by itself! That's two for two, Junpei. When we went through the number one door in our ple previous playthrough, Junpei accidentally also broke something. Not broke it. Like he said, you know, it broke all by itself. It's actually a thing that we need to get for the puzzle. Uh, but to the right here, we have a door C, and we want to go ahead and use this wheel on this winch, a hand-operated winch. Um, there's no wheel to turn. Oh yeah, I've got the wheel I pulled off the other winch, don't I? See if it fits. Sweet, it's a perfect fit. It's like they were made for each other. Not shake at all. Good, I should be able to turn this now. Good work, Junpei. We should be able to haul up the wooden box now. You see? The wooden box. It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? It's hanging from the rope on the winch, isn't it? It looks like there's some sort of device in the box. I'm not sure what it is. At any rate, you might as well turn that wheel now. I am counting on you. Alright, I'll turn the wheel. Huh. What's this? What happened? The wheel only turns to the left. It only turns to the left? That means we can't reel, the, reel up that rope. Yeah, we can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that will be a problem. We will simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down. I will be counting on you, Junpei. Sure thing, no sweat. I believe the box has reached the floor. Yeah. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. The box that had only recently hung just below the catwalk was now now sat on the floor. It had come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt, near where June had collapsed. Jim Pei could see her, still, still leaning against the wall as if she barely had the strength to sit up. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see heat rising from her body. She doesn't seem to be improving. Ace's expression was inscrutable, but he'd said what they'd all been thinking. Well, of course not. She's not just going to get better right away, you know. It'll take time. He tried desperately to convince himself that, that's what he, that what he'd said was true. What could be causing this, I wonder? 
illness, perhaps. No, it's just gotta be exhaustion. James's response was confident and certain. She gets dropped into some weird ass ship, forced to play some messed up game. If you think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her, you know? So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah. We're just running around this room solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. How the hell could you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in, dis snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a rat lab rat? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But it does seem like a possibility, you know. They stood there for a few more minutes, no one speaking, until Santa turned and walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. Guinea pigs, huh? Let's go ahead and move back through the A door here and make our way down just so we can uh, go check out that winch again. Uh, was it this one or was it... No, it's the one over here. Control panel for something. Some kind of machine. Maybe a control panel? It looks like some kind of control panel. It's got three terminals on the back. Indeed it does. Sort of control panel, apparently. Interesting that it has three terminals on the back. Uh, if we go ahead and open up this door right here. Look, three terminals. Or three holes, rather. The three terminals are going to go into the ports there. Maybe this hole is where the control panel goes. Well, there's only one way to find out. In you go. Dude, you did it. Everything looks all right. Okay, but what do we do now? Why don't you press the button next to it? You aren't one? Yes. <laughs> all right, I'll just do that. Pushing. Sweet, all sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And, oh yes, I think I just heard something turn on. Oh, what's that? What happened? Junpei, look, the conveyor belt's moving. The conveyor belt. Well, I guess it's done moving now. And there's still a bunch of coal on the belt, though. It looks like a bunch of it got dumped off the end of the belt into that wooden box where we found the control panel. Coal. Coal, huh? Box filled with coal. A wooden box filled with coal. Guess there's really only one thing we could do with this stuff. It's a wooden box filled with coal. There's really only one thing we can do with coal. If we move back over here... Go ahead and look at these things right here. This is where you put coal into the furnace? That's right. I had a look at it earlier, but it's rusted shut, I'm afraid. Perhaps you should check the other side. Let's do that. Go over to the left here. And it opens up just fine. There's a hole that'll let us put the coal into the furnace. Maybe we can get some coal in there and set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. Alright, that's the last of it. No coal left in the wind box. And... nothing. Great. Well, I guess I should have expected that. Why would just throwing coal into a cold furnace do anything? Ah, uh, well, man can dream. Junpe Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke this furnace with coal, which will heat the water stored up there and make steam, which will then drive something else. Am I correct? In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with the steam to power the turbine and drive the steam engine, right? E yeah, I guess that's the, uh gist of it. Hmm. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal. The furnace is enormous. We're gonna need a whole hell lot of more coal than this. Very well, then. If the three of us work together, then we should manage to fill it much faster. Uh, I wanna help, too. Man, I totally, totally didn't even see her walk up. Are, are you feeling up to that? Y yes Yeah, right. You look like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you'd better rest some more, alright? But I... No arguing. You need to rest, so you just stay there. We'll handle this. Okay. I understand. Alright, time for some manly work. Let's get this coal into those furnaces. Man, this is a lot of work. <laughs> All right, I think this should be sufficient. All right, now we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me your matches. What makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we gonna light it? 
Perhaps there's a device nearby that will allow us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? And I think that should be... So if we move... I forget... Do I move up here again? Yeah. Okay, I think this should turn it on. Is this... I think it might be... It probably is. I think this is how we ignite the furnace. That means if we move that thing down... Alright, let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei. Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Hmm? The gears. They're spinning. What the hell are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. So if we head on over to these uh, wheels right here, we get a gold disc. The gold disc. It has a number of lines engraved on it. I can make out three colors here. Red, blue, and black. Hmm. I wonder what they mean. Gold disc. A bunch of lines carved into it. The same th sort of thing can be found in the other other wheels as well. We have the bronze disc right over here. The bronze disc. It has a bunch of lines on it in three different colors. Red, blue, and black. And finally, we have gold, we have bronze, and of course we have silver. Silver disc. The silver disc has a bunch of lines on it, but the red ones really stand out, right? The red ones, huh? Silver disc. The red lines are especially noticeable. So I'm I believe these can be used back over here. Uh, we have these stairs over here. The completely different set of stairs that lead up to this podium and this door. Is that a podium? Is that the correct word? Anyways, it, it looks like it unlocks the door. And there's a depression here that looks like it's the outline of the three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe maybe we put in those three discs we full we found into this thing. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them in. Huh? That's odd. Nothing's happening. Maybe you're, I don't know, putting them in the wrong places? Perhaps you'd have to, f you have them facing the wrong directions. Perhaps you should rotate the discs to make some, some of the lines connect to one another. Hmm. Well, no, no harm in trying. Instructions for operations. Touch the screen. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Disc is touched, it'll rotate. When the white arrows touch, the discs are switched. Please note when the discs are switched, the angle, the angles for the discs are reset. So we go ahead and swap some of these around. And just twist them so that they all form one complete shape. The red lines on these discs. I think I can make a star polygon with these. And that's it. Yes, the door's open. And with that, we will have to leave off this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!